since the comparison for the 7700K versus the 1700 Ryzen chip with two almost identical systems did so well, and if you haven't seen that, check out the card up above. Uh, I thought I would do a fairly similar comparison, but something that you've been asking for, which is the Wraith Spire cooler. Now this is the stock cooler that comes with the Ryzen 7 1700 CPU, but I thought I'd make it a bit more interesting and also compare it to the Intel stock cooler that comes with the non-K series CPUs. So in this case, we're using a 7700. Now these bundles were actually kindly provided by AWD IT and you can check out these bundles in the links down below Especially if you're in the UK and you want to pick these up But uh, to give you an idea of the specs the Intel spec or the Intel bundle that we have is as I said a 7700 non-K variant which obviously still clocks to 4.2 gigahertz on its own using its boost We also have an ASUS Z270P prime board as well as uh, 16 gigs of crucial value memory now this also comes with uh, an Intel 600p SSD, at least in my kit. I don't believe that this is actually what comes with the normal kit itself, and I can't find it on their website, so I'm not entirely sure if they're currently selling it yet, but either way, uh, the 600p is actually getting its complete own video, so do stick around for that one. The AMD system is almost identical in that it has a Ryzen 7 1700, and a SUS B350 Prime board as well, so a similar type of motherboard, and also 16 gigs of Corsair sort of value RAM. Now this one also did come with the Intel 600p SSD, but again, that will be a separate video, so do stick around for that one. Taking a look at the coolers themselves, we can see that the Wraith Spire is pretty awesome looking with its RGB LED around the rim, and obviously the white AMD logo. It's also considerably thicker, in fact, it looks almost double the height of the stock Intel heatsink, and considering this is a stock heatsink that comes with the Ryzen 7 1700, that's actually pretty impressive. Now the stock Intel heatsink is actually pretty tiny, so so you can kind of expect and potentially even see where this is going, but uh, yeah, let's get into the temps. Taking a look at the Intel system first, with the idle temperatures, it did vary quite a lot depending on what the CPU utilization was at the sort of idle state. A good average for this was about 42 degrees Celsius. Under full load, 100% on all threads and all cores, you're looking at 79 degrees Celsius, so pretty toasty. When it comes to the AMD system, however, I was actually really, really impressed. Now the idle temperature was a very stable 37 degrees Celsius and when fully maxed out the chip at 100% CPU utilization across all cores and all threads you were looking at 65 degrees at a peak and when the fan ramped up just a little bit more after a couple of seconds of it sort of working itself out it stabilized itself at just 53 degrees Celsius. That is really very impressive. Uh, and the other thing to mention is that that is at stock clocks. And while I can't overclock the 7700K, at least that easily anyway, or the 7700 non-K, should I say, the 1700, I thought I'd give it a little bit of a push. I overclocked it to 3.8 gigahertz running at, I think, 1.385 volts. Uh, and that was pretty much just too hot. It ran to 95 degrees Celsius before I just wasn't comfortable with it at that temperature. So I stopped all the stress testing and ended it there. But... Uh, obviously this isn't necessarily designed for heavy overclocks on this one so you perhaps want a bigger terra cooler or something like an all-in-one water cooler. Now the next question you're probably asking is well the Intel cooler kind of could have been quieter right? No. Here's a quick sound test of the Intel stock cooler and here's one of the AMD stock cooler. Now the difference may not be too audible when it comes to these recordings, but I can tell you from first-hand experience that the Intel stock cooler was a considerable bit louder. Now of course this was with the side panel open, although no other fans besides the graphics card fans, which do actually turn themselves off when not being used, which they weren't for this test, uh, and there was no other fans on in this system, it was only the AMD or Intel stock coolers. Uh, this is obviously going to be a little bit contrary to what you may experience with some fans in the front or the top or the side or the back or wherever else in your case and the side panel on as my testing was done with no other fans in the chassis but having the side panel off as well. Another question you might be asking is well the Intel bundle could have been cheaper right? 
Well, not quite. AWD IT at the time of filming are selling the Ryzen bundle for £499.93, whereas they're selling the Intel bundle for £509.98, a full £10.05p more expensive. Now that doesn't include the SSD, although it does include 16GB of the Crucial RAM and obviously the motherboard and the CPU and the stock coolers. Uh, and overall that's actually a pretty good deal for both of them, but obviously the Ryzen bundle does come in cheaper cooler and quieter as well. Now I want to make it clear that this isn't necessarily a fair fight. The AMD system will absolutely demolish the 7700 when it comes to non-gaming applications as it is literally double the core count and while it doesn't necessarily have the same single thread of performance so especially at 1080p playing games you might not see the exact same numbers there. When you get into 1440p and 4k it's almost identical so I wouldn't be too worried about that either. Overall, especially the Ryzen system is a really impressive buy and I definitely recommend it considering that it's cheaper, cooler, quieter and more performance when it comes to anything that it isn't gaming and still equally performance when it comes to gaming too. So I'd love to hear what you think in the comments down below. Which bundle would you prefer out of the two if you had to pick one? Uh, and otherwise that's kind of it. If you want to learn any more about these, I'll leave a link to AWD IT in the description down below for both the Intel and the AMD bundle. And of course there's Overclockers UK and Amazon affiliate links in the description down below too if you're not from the UK or if you just want to buy anything else that isn't these bundles necessarily it'd be fantastic if you could use those links it genuinely supports me it supports the channel helps me uh, you know keep paying the rent and all that sort of stuff so if you do that that would be fantastic otherwise I'll leave some other videos over here for you of course the other comparison in the cards up above and otherwise the subscribe button over here too if this is your first Tech Team GB video I'd love to hear what you think in the comments down below I try and reply to as many comments as I can so I'd love to, to speak you there. Also feel free to follow me on Facebook and Twitter at HitchMGB on both and otherwise uh, yeah thank you for watching hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you all in the next video.